Welcome to the podcast, She is Fab, where we discuss all things fab, women empowerment, and life coaching. My name is Evelyn, also known as the Fab Chief Desk, and I am a mindset transformation coach. Welcome to another episode of the She is Fab podcast. My name is Evelyn, your host, mindset transformation coach. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Jessica Powell. Jessica is living out her dream as a life coach in Lexington, Kentucky with her husband and two kiddos. When she's not coaching, she enjoys a good nerdy show like Doctor Who or The Mandalorian and gets outside for a good run or bike ride when she can. As a life coach, her goal is to help as many women on their journeys in fulfilling a life that makes them feel like it's attainable. And she believes that we all have what it takes to live the life that we love and that we are worth the work it takes to get exactly what we want. Welcome, Jessica. Hey, thanks for having me. So glad to have you and so excited to learn more about you and for the audience to learn more about you. So tell us a bit about your path. Why did you become a life coach? What led you there? Yes. So with as far as like my bio goes, like enjoying some nerdy shows, but also like doing what I, I love getting outside and like being active, but um, it wasn't always that way. Um, well, and it's funny because in college I did ROTC, which if you don't know, Reserve Officer Training Corps is what it stands for. It's basically like officer training for the military while you're in school. And the whole time I participated in that, well, and initially my goal with becoming an officer was becoming a chaplain, which is kind of like a pastor in the military, basically. And Mm -hmm. like having a career in the military doing that. And so being in the military, you have to be pretty active. You have to stay in shape. You have to meet the physical standards. And um, honestly, that was something I always struggled with. And especially with like my weight too. Um, I had a really hard time meeting those standards. And it was really tough for me. Like over time, it really took a toll on my mentality and what I thought I was capable of doing. And um, like, I placed a lot of value in who I thought I was based on like how successful I was at that. And so because I really struggled with it, it really made me um, question whether that was something I could really do. And, and so being, so then as far as having that active lifestyle and staying in shape and stuff, like it just real, it just was a struggle for a really long time. And so I didn't really enjoy that, uh, that physical activity. And I feel like that carried on even after I did end up commissioning just like very, it was very close, but I did up, end up commissioning as an officer in the army reserves when in 2011 and that history though still remained with me. And, um, because it was still such a struggle, even as an officer, I kind of felt like a fraud. Like I didn't belong because I had so much trouble with it. And again, still like exercise was a, Ugh, I have to do this because, you know, if not, I'll be overweight, blah, 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 all that craziness. And um, I ended up not becoming a chaplain in the military. I did three semesters of seminary and realized it was not for me. And so that was another challenge in itself of for so many years, I thought this was the path I was supposed to take and it turned out it wasn't. And so for the longest time, I was like, well, what, what is this path I'm supposed to take then? And, um, had different jobs over the years, but still surrounded around this idea of, I want to help people. And um, when I got pregnant with my first child, I was still struggling with my weight and like just the self-worth that we attach at times with how we look and how we feel um, was still a really big, a really hard time for me. And I had a lot of health issues during that pregnancy. And after I had my 
after I had him, um, I was still really struggling. And that's when kind of, I decided I need to start taking better care of myself. And a lot of my journey was surrounded around my health and what the steps I took to get healthy. Um, several, a couple years later, I was, I got pregnant with my daughter and determined like this pregnancy was going to be different. i had already started making changes in my health because I was like, the, the things that I went through and how I felt like, I just don't want to feel that way anymore. And so I started exercising for me because not because of the military had these standards or that I felt like I had to lose weight. It's just, it was more, I was able to transition that to, I just want to be healthy and I want to feel strong. And I want to be able to show my kids that I'm taking care of myself and that is important and that it's important to take care of yourself. And so that kind of leads to becoming a coach is like, I wanted to help other women realize that the importance of taking care of themselves and that even though our role as a mom, um, it, it demands a lot from us. And, but that doesn't mean you can't still be who you were before you were a mom and that it's still really important to take time to take care of yourself because when you're taking care of yourself, whether it's, if, whether if it's with exercise or a hobby you really enjoy, just something that brings you joy outside of our normal roles like, is really important and it helps us show up so much better for the people that we love ultimately. Mm-hmm. Uh, kudos to all the moms out there. I definitely know how difficult it is to manage uh, the various roles that you play as a mother. And as women in general, a lot of times we lack that self-care. And then on top of that, when you have a family, that's compounded because now you're concerned with everybody else's needs and not so much your own. Uh, yeah. So thank you for sharing you know, that aspect of it. Something else that I kind of heard there is that you had this aspiration, this career aspiration, or this plan that you were trying to fulfill. And then once you were in it, there were all these things happening that weren't in alignment. You weren't excited Mm -hmm. about it. It was more like a burden. And then when you went through your seminary, you realized that it wasn't for you. Um, On that note, I want to express to the audience out there that sometimes we have a plan for ourselves or a path that we think is in alignment with us, but later you find out it's not. And it's okay. It's okay to deviate and and do something else. Uh, So Jessica, at what point, because obviously you worked through your own uh, transition, your own experience with uh, the physical fitness, right? There was a bit of a struggle there before you decided, okay, I'm going to do this for me because I want to be healthy. Uh, But at what point were you like, you know what? I can actually take this and I can help others. Um, I would say about, about three years ago is when, you know, you know, cause I was trying to figure out what career I wanted to do, what path I wanted to take. And I was actually at a conference. I don't know if you're familiar with Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins. So I actually yes. attended one of those and that's when it occurred to me, like, I can be a coach, like. This would be a great, like, this is how I can help people. Um, Like, because this whole time I'm like, I want to help people. I want to help people. And especially with the struggles that I was having, it was like, I know other women are having similar struggles with me or similar struggles as me. And why not help walk them through some of the, through their journey in how it looks best for them? Like, obviously, like, one thing I like to talk about is like everyone's journey is different. What works for me may not work for you, but that doesn't mean like I can't still help you figure out what tools would be the most beneficial for you as you go along that. And then also with, with mindset, like, so I think it, there's so often that we think, oh, well, I'll just do, someone says, this is the exact way you need to do it and you'll be successful. And easy to get discouraged if we try those and it doesn't exactly work that way for them. And so they think, well, you know, maybe I'm just hopeless. 
and I'm not meant to have the change that I want when that's not true. Mm. Maybe there's so many different ways to do something and achieve whatever goal you want. And so figuring out what works best for you, I think, um, is the most important and like being willing to experiment and try different things out to see what would work best. That is the key point right there, right? The reason why a lot of us are coaches, right? Is because there are some catalysts that either led us down the path or we knew from inception that we wanted to, you know, be a coach regardless, you know, of the area. But one of the things that is, is so important that we try to express to clients is that even if our experiences are not exactly the same because everyone is unique, we have tools and resources that can help you to make your path a bit easier which is yeah. why you would seek the help of a professional, right? If we were all equipped with all the tools and, and the mindset and everything, we would all live a much better life, make better decisions, but sometimes we need a little bit of help. And that's where coaches like you and I uh, come in. Yeah. So Jessica, uh, tell us in a little more detail how you help your clients. Is, is there a program that you have? Is there a methodology that you use? How do you work with your clients? So I, um, I wouldn't say I necessarily have like a specific, a super unique, um, like set of steps that I take each person through. And I think it's partly because everyone is so different. And so I don't, I like the flexibility of seeing like, you know, kind of experimenting with the clients and seeing, okay, you know, maybe this will work for you. We'll give it, we'll see how it does, how it works. If it doesn't work, we can try something new, but the main thing is like just not giving up. And, but, um, kind of starting from a more general standpoint is just, what are some things that the client really values? Do they value family time? Do they value, like if they don't have a family, because I don't work specifically, like just exclusively with moms. I do work with just women in general. Um, And so maybe it's just setting, they want to value setting, they value setting boundaries or, um, and like taking better care of themselves. So we figure out what you value and is what you're doing aligning with what you value right now. And if it's not how, what little changes can we make so that your life aligns with those things and what boundaries do we need to set? What things do you maybe need to say no to, or, you know, rearrange, how can we rearrange your schedule and the things you're doing to get the, um, the desired result you're wanting. Yeah. I love that you talked about boundaries. Boundaries is such an important word and important action at that. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, women overall tend to lack self-care and and I mean, genuine, authentic self-care, not the, I'm going to take five minutes here to catch a breath. No. Uh, And then when you have a family on top of that, you, your role as a mother, you are a provider a provider to the needs of your children first and foremost, and you know, your partner, if, if you have a partner. And yeah. so because of that, you feel you don't have permission to take the time for self-care or to set those boundaries. Yeah, definitely. So, and, and that's one, and it's funny. I was actually talking with my sister-in-law about that today. She shared a post with me, uh, exactly on self-care she just recently had a child within the last year and is discovering like the whole the world of motherhood and the expectation society places on us as mothers and that like we just feel like we have the weight of the world on our shoulders and that it's all our responsibility like we have to take care of everything and so um taking time for ourselves then feels selfish or if I, if I ask my husband, Hey, do you mind watching the kids while I go for a run? Because I'm just feeling, you know, really on edge and, um, exhausted, like mentally, but a run like helps me process everything and just kind of come back feeling more energized. Like I, 
me asking for that does not make me selfish. It doesn't make me a bad mom. If anything, it makes me a better mom because I'm, you know, coming back more willing to give to my family what they need and not feeling either resentful or frustrated because I'm not getting that time to myself. And the same goes with my spouse. Mm -hmm. Like we are a team for sure. Like if you um, have a partner or a significant other and you like, it's important to share those responsibilities, you know, don't, and we can't expect to be able to read the other person's mind when they need something. Like if you, if you know them well enough and can like pick up on the cues that put them forth, like maybe they're acting really short or, you know, are, you, you can just tell they're running out of patience, even if they don't ask for it saying, Hey, how can I help you right now? What do you need? How, and how can, and how can we do this so that we both can be the best parents and partners that we can be to each other and building like a more, a stronger family, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, that's important communication with you and your partner, right? If you have a significant other, because what I've seen and experienced that there's always one person who at any given point in time might be doing a little more than the other. And yeah. sometimes because we're in our own experience, our own world at times, uh, we might not acknowledge or see that. So being able to communicate to your partner, hey, I need your help in this area is something that is very crucial uh, for us to do. And this goes for, you know, woman, man, whoever is listening out there, you yeah. have to take the time to communicate your needs because we're not mind readers. <laughs> no one's going to yeah. know what you need or what you want. And yeah. to also ask for that time for your self-care. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So I want to ask you something because as we started talking about asking, you know, uh, your partner for help or assistance, what are your thoughts when it comes to gender norms? Because I feel like gender norms also impact how we as women approach and interact with, you know, our partners uh, in the event of like, you know, for example, my boyfriend, right? I might not feel as free to ask for something because the gender norms are telling me that I should be able to perform in that capacity. Mm -hmm. And so I have to, you know, take a step back and, and like, okay, no, that's not what we're doing here. What are your thoughts on that? That's interesting. Yeah, I do agree. There are, well, I don't know if agree is the correct term, but I do, yeah, agree that there are certain expectations set on us, I think, by society. And, but why, why do, I don't know, why not challenge them? If it doesn't, like, I think that goes back to what, um, deciding what works best for you and, you know, your family, or just like, if you're not married or not dating, whatever, just doing what works best for you. Like, I know there are probably men out there who have more feminine energy and vice versa. Like, who cares? Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I, maybe that sounds like <laughs> insensitive, but like, I think that's a, like kind of trending more um, in the sense of like challenging those gender norms. And like, I take mm -hmm. out the trash. My husband mm -hmm. probably does more dishes than I do. Uh, you know, so, and it's not because, it's just how our house has like has operated like and I mean he still he mows the lawn not that I wouldn't be willing to mow the lawn mm -hmm. um but I think it just it just depends on on the person and you know mm -hmm. if you want to have a more traditional you know how you operate the family then and that is what makes you happy like who am I to judge that or like, or if you, you know, cause, and also too, th this is also speaking more in like the male female relationships, but like, there's all different kinds of people and relationships and, you know, um, who am I to tell you how you need to live your life? Mm -hmm. That, well, that is important right there. Those of you that are listening or watching understand one your needs and what you want communicate those needs and wants set boundaries 
a, a lot for proper self care and challenge the norms. Don't let these outside external factors or what you may have known or limiting belief prevent you from creating the kind of life, kind of environment, kind of relationship that you want. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So Jessica, what other areas uh, do you help your clients with? We've talked about boundaries. We've talked about setting space for what they value. And we've talked about health. Um, I think those are kind of like probably the primary areas. We, we start with that and then but also determining... Well, we help, I help them kind of figure out what they want their life to look like if so. Um, and, the, and I feel like that kind of st- stems from like my own experiences. Like a couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to challenge myself physically and I was like, I'm going to train for a triathlon. I've never done that before. That sounds like it'll be fun. <laughs> and, um, but that kind of like aligned with me having the desire to be strong and healthy and, you know, that's a way to challenge and push myself. And so I think I help people do the same thing and kind of helping them get out of their comfort zone. If there's something that they're wanting to try to do, try and do, then, you know, do something that makes you a little scared or uncomfortable, but ultimately like brings you closer to that, person you want to be and the life you want to live like if they have if they've ever had an idea of like oh well that would be kind of cool to try sometime but you know kind of going back to like making dreams a reality like they don't have to be dreams you know why ask helping them ask like why not why not me why can't I have that thing Mm -hmm. does it it doesn't have to be necessarily like a dream oh someday um Let's figure out how we can make it happen because if it's important to you and even though it's scary, like I think doing something that makes us uncomfortable or is a little scary is really what helps us grow and be more willing to go Mm -hmm. after like, you know, it kind of translates into all areas of your life. Um, If you grow in your confidence in one area, I think it really say like with your physical health or something. I think it makes you more willing to be scared and go after opportunities with your career or, um, you know, stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. um, really helping them get out of their comfort zone is, I think, yeah, a fun one. It's in that uh, uncomfortability that we experience the most growth and the most development. And you know, a lot of us don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to be challenged. We want to take the easy way out or stick with what we know but the reality is you don't grow you don't evolve unless you're being challenged unless you're uncomfortable so there's that need where if you want something if you really want something if you're grounded in your why because that's the important thing if your why isn't solid Mm. you're not going to achieve that ultimate you know end goal so that's step one is really understanding why you're going to take the path that you want to take. And then if you have that, you can achieve uh, that end result. Yeah, for sure. So something else I wanted to ask you is regarding the support system, right? Because I'm sure it happens, you know, whether it's a family, friend, lover, what have you, where they might know you in one capacity, but now you're making a change in your life. So that perception is being altered and they may not be the most supportive uh in your experience how has your family adopted and adapted the change uh to support you wow it's so yeah i'm really glad you brought that up because that really is something to consider um similar to like i think they talk about the crabs like one crab tries to like climb out of a bucket but they like all the other crabs pull it back down with them it's really easy like, and, um, I think people who are making changes are realizing that that is something that 
definitely affects them and it can go one of two ways like it could either bring them like the they might pull them back down or they might realize crap by me doing this like it's going to be there might be some relationships that are going to be challenged or even like broken as a result because this other person isn't willing to you know, support me or accept the fact that I'm making these changes. And I think it's important. um, I think that kind of comes back to the boundaries too. And that you might have some friends or family or whoever that, um, that don't want to go along the ride with you. And maybe that just means that if you don't want to cut that person out of your life, you might just not you know, communicate with them as much as you used to. And um, I think too, still respecting like the fact that just because we're making these changes doesn't necessarily mean these other people have to do the same thing. And, you know, understanding they may want to stay where they are and that's okay. But it's also hard because especially as you as your mindset changes all this other stuff you have all these realizations that are really powerful and you want to share that stuff with them um but unless they're open to it then you know you just it's hard like they they you have to kind of let them come around to it on their own time um but also not forgetting why you're making the changes that you want to make um because that's still Mm -hmm. really important and you still have to live your life and do what makes you happy and that may not make everyone else happy like other people won't like Mm -hmm. that but they're not the ones living your life yes so that is a very important uh note right there everyone uh you are still an individual at the end of the day regardless of being in a relationship or having a family. And so you have to ensure that you have your needs uh, met and that you're not allowing uh, the people in your life to circumvent or limit you. Obviously, there's a little bit more forethought that goes into play when you have a family, but just because you have a family does not mean that you are no longer an individual. Mm, Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know that there's much more to add to that. (laughs) But yeah, like you said, forethought, like you may Mm -hmm. need to, you know, yeah, like you said, it takes a lot of forethought and really not just um, like within yourself too and what you're willing to, to do in those situations. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just want to put out there, I am not a mother, unless you count my two fur babies. (laughs) But, um, you know, my childhood growing up, my mother was a single mother. So I saw how she struggled uh, to raise us and provide for us and how she sacrificed her own care uh, to prioritize us. Obviously, I'm so grateful for that. But looking back at it, I can see how if she had taken more time and prioritized herself in some way, she would have been able to provide even better care and to excel more in other areas, which is again, why Jessica, it's so important that you are helping, you know, women and mothers to take control one of the goal that they want to meet to set those boundaries and practice that self care because in that self care, once you rejuvenate, and you come back with this new energy, you can do so much more. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, seriously, shout out to all the single parents out there because it really is, it's that much more challenging. Um, And even if you don't have family nearby, like hopefully you have, have the opportunity to build a support system around you. Um, to help give you those chances to go do things that help you be a better mom or give you the opportunities to, you know, help support your family that much better. 
It's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my dad, does- um, sorry, I was gonna say my, uh, so I'm in a similar boat as you, my, with my childhood, like my parents divorced when I was really young. So I definitely, mm. definitely, um, understand that for sure. Yes. And I find that, you know, when you grew up in a household where you had parents who were separated, when you build your own family, you really want to, uh, be more successful at it. Essentially you want to, uh, yeah not replicate what you grew up with, uh, actually yeah. have a long lasting functioning marriage. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so that's why I say kudos to, to the parents out there because it's difficult. It's difficult one as a, a woman, right? You're, you're a minority at that. You have societal norms, you have gender norms that you're dealing with. You have these roles and expectations that you're expected to play. You're expected to be kind of like uh, the Stepford wife, right? Everything is peachy keen at home. Everything's taken care of. Everyone else's needs are met. But when it comes to you, maybe not so much. Yeah. Or if you have certain things that you want to do, you're still, I think at times we put those expectations, like say, um, say you want to have like a good morning routine. Um, and as a way of like self-care, like you get up, you have some coffee, maybe you do a workout or whatever, but then there's still that expectation from other things that we have going on of, of perfection, I guess, of like doing things really Mm -hmm. well that, you know, we place that expectation on ourselves, even with those things. And we put so much pressure on ourselves. And if it doesn't go perfectly, then, you know, it's really easy to beat ourselves up for the, for it not being perfect. But I feel like those are the more, those are the opportunities to give ourselves more grace um, Mm -hmm. because we're doing what we can to take care of ourselves. And it's not always going to be perfect. Life isn't perfect. If you Mm -hmm. need to leave the dishes in the sink one night so that you can sit down and read a book you really love because you enjoy reading, like, the, the dishes will be okay. You know, like they'll mm-hmm. still be there. You're not a bad mom or wife for leaving the dishes in the sink or have your husband or partner wash the dishes. Like, you know, so really like releasing the pressure that we put on, on ourselves to feel like we have to do everything and it all has to be perfect. And, you know, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, it's easy for me to go off on a tangent on this, <laughs> but like the whole like hot mess, like, Oh, I'm just a hot mess mom or whatever, because I have dirty dishes mm-hmm. or I have laundry that's not folded or, you know, I have toys around the house. Do you think all the other houses are perfectly spotless all the time? Do you, how many mm-hmm. times do you go over to a friend's house and they have kids and they're like, Oh, I'm sorry. My house is such a mess. And it's like, that's okay. (laughs) So like, I think Mm -hmm. we, we picture other people houses and their lives being perfect or something. And that we're the only one Mm -hmm. we, we call ourselves a hot mess because our life isn't perfect. It's not spotless all the time. That doesn't make you a hot mess. It makes you human. Like, let's stop. Let's get rid of the hot mess thing and stop labeling, labeling our lives as, or ourselves as a hot mess, just because, you know, we're not just going constantly, you know, Mm -hmm. or you see like on TV, like the perfect, you know, family home, everything is in its place and just sparkling all the time. Um, I will say guys, uh, a little confession, the chore that I hate the most is laundry. (laughs) I will leave my laundry in the dryer for days. The only time it comes out and it gets folded is if I have another load that I need to do. And so I need that dryer. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that would, that would totally be me. If, um, if I didn't have my husband, he, I feel like the, I I don't know if I'm just the odd one. Uh, I'm probably not. I'm sure there's other women out there too, who have partners that are the same, but like, I feel like the lazy one sometimes, like I, my husband doesn't fold my laundry because I like to fold my laundry a certain way. And I have a huge basket sitting next to me right now (laughs) outside.
side of the view of the camera <laughs> that has been sitting there for a couple days and will probably sit there mm-hmm. for another day or two before I start pulling things out that I need. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just let's just stop pretending that we're the only we're unique in these like we're not the only ones that mm-hmm. leave laundry to be folded or dishes in the sink or toys on the floor like that's just mm-hmm. life and we need to take exactly. that pressure off ourselves to feel like in order to be the perfect mom or the perfect wife we have to do all of these things so mm-hmm. but that's my little well, that's so important, like you said <laughs> that you know we give ourselves permission right give ourselves permission to be human right to to be yeah. authentically ourselves and to let go of the guilt and the shame of these expectations that are put upon us yeah for sure for sure i feel like life would be less a lot less overwhelming and stressful if we didn't play, like take those expectations that are placed on ourselves and let it determine our value or worth as a person depending on how well we do those things like Mm -hmm. those things are just normal things they're normal parts of our life and they don't determine who Mm -hmm. we are and what we're worth on how Mm -hmm. well we do them so agree So Jessica, tell us about your offerings. Uh, Is it individual one-on-one sessions? Is there group coaching? Tell us more about how you can connect with your clients. So right now I just offer one-on-one coaching. Um, And down the line, I have plans for for some group coaching, but right now I have, I do, I meet with my clients one-on-one weekly um, for 12 weeks um, to help them, you know, help them relieve the stress and overwhelm of life and start like creating a schedule and a routine that works for them and makes them happy. So yeah, that's what I got. Right. So guys, we are going to put, we're going to put all the details of how to connect with Jessica in the podcast details and the YouTube details. As she mentioned, she's doing one-on-one sessions for 12 weeks to help you work through getting from point A to point B. And just to confirm, Jessica, you have a website, jessicapowellcoaching.com. You're also active on Facebook with the Facebook group called Unleashed Mama Coaching. I like that name. Yeah. Are there any other areas where you're active that you want uh, folks to connect with you on? Yeah, I'm also on Instagram at jess underscore powell underscore coaching. And I also have a podcast that I've just started recently called Unleashed Mama with Coach, with Coach Jess. So hopefully um, if you're looking for other ways to, you know, uh, get inspired, um, then you can check me out there too. Yes, guys, make sure you go check out all of the various socials. If anything that you listen to today or, you know, as you're watching resonated with you definitely reach out to Jessica and find out more about how she can help you Jessica any parting words you want to uh, impart on the audience um I would say you are worth the life you want if there's anything out there that you've thought oh that would be nice start like ask yourself why not why not go for that thing? And, you know, it may be scary, but it is worth it. And you are worth it. And yeah, the world deserves the best. That's such a great message. Yes. Love that. I love that motivation, that inspiration. If you guys want to rewind and replay that so you can really (laughs) absorb uh, her message. Jessica, thank you so much for being here today, for sharing your experience and for talking with me about the various areas where we as women can do more and be more. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate the opportunity to share and I hope someone takes this and really just runs with it and, you know, just goes out and be, be 
awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I kind of thank took you, there for and you are but... welcome. <laughs> all right guys so as we said we're going to put all the details so you can connect with her make sure that you go and find her stock her social media and if you need her help definitely reach out for a uh, discovery call and lastly like i always say preparation accountability execution and resolve are keys to your success until next time <laughs>